The pandemic and its effects have led to widespread economic devastation. Businesses have closed and or are hanging on. People have lost their jobs or been forced to take pay cuts. The common motto trumpeted a lot these days is that we are all in this together. But are we really? All over the world, some CEOs have seen their fortunes skyrocket, even as their employees sitting lower down on the pecking order have actually suffered. In the US, more than half of 100 companies with the lowest median employee wages in the 500 index boosted C-level pay by changing compensation rules through either lower performance targets, retention bonuses, or finagling with stock options. Companies such as Coca-Cola Co. and Yum Brands Inc. reduce median worker pay by 2%, even as compensation for their CEOs rose 29%. In the UK, the billionaires on the Sunday Times Rich list saw their wealth sharply increasing during the pandemic, growing by 22% from £106.5 billion to £597 billion. Here's another stat for you. There are now a record 171 billionaires, with a big B, in the UK. This in a year where people have lost so much, where Thousands are burying loved ones, and millions are worried about livelihoods. Even the person who compiled the list, Robert Watts, said that the fact that many of the super rich have become richer during this time makes it an unsettling boom. And that is a very nice way to put it. Some would call it sickening. But that is overseas. Well, what about Malaysia? Of the top 50 head honchos based on publicly available data, 13 saw bumps, 15 took pay cuts. The man sitting at the top of the list is of course Gunting boss Tan Sri Lim Kok Tay. If you look at his remuneration for Gunting Malaysia alone, even with a 20% reduction, he still took home 38.5 million, despite the Gunting group going through one of the worst years in the company's history. Then there's Dialogue Group Executive Chairman Tan Sri Dr. Nyao Boon Kiet. In terms of percentage, he took the largest pay cut about 45.5%, taking home 5.1 million last year. Meanwhile, over at Ambank, CEO Datuk Sulaiman Muhammad Tahir saw his pay package improve 58% to 6.64 million for FY20. But because of the way its financial year is structured, this may not be the best indication of the operating environment last year. So let's switch to two companies whose financial years did end in December. Heineken's Roland Bala saw a 48% increase to 3.89 million, while Nestle's Juan Aranol saw a 40% hike to 4.43 million. It almost seems at odds with the fact that Heineken had a bad year as the MCO and its whatever incarnations shut bars and curbed nightlife, reflected in the fact that its net profit halved. Nestle, FMCG giant it is, also saw a 20% drop in earnings. Now, to be fair, it isn't exactly raining money for all of Malaysia's top brass. In the field of tech, for instance, Zoom became a household name overnight. And Amazon's Jeff Bezos has a yacht so large, it in fact needs its own yacht. In comparison, for the country's top 10 tech earners, the top pay bump was no higher than 18%. Halfway down that list, salaries either stayed the same or in fact came down. Meanwhile, surprisingly for FY20, a lot of the glove head honchos did not see massive pay rises despite registering almost supernatural profits. The biggest player, Top Glove, saw its EC Tan Sri Dr. Lim Wee Chai's pay packet go up only about 10% to 3.46 million. Rubberex's Group MD won that race in terms of percentage at least, with a 46% increase in remuneration to 1.38 million. Now, the caveat. The big as Jeff Bezos's yet caveat here is that FY21 will most likely be the year to watch as money from the orders flow in and their expansions take hold. Ultimately, the rich becoming richer is not really a surprise. While some continued to take home millions last year, the regular Joe was having it tough. Last year, the salary worker in Malaysia saw an average increase of about 4.7%. The jobless rate rose 4.5% the highest rate recorded since 1993. Meanwhile, some companies froze hiring, others reduced salaries. Sure, the guys at the helm have always conventionally taken home more. They are the ones steering the companies through good times and bad. But in times like these, 
Take into account the broad economic fallout of COVID-19, the rising cost of just about everything. Wouldn't it be more fair for more in the C-suites to share some of that pain? As more organizations talk about ESG these days, they need to be held accountable for that and not simply use it as a buzzword of the moment. Because if anything this pandemic has taught us, we are in this together. It's just that some of us are in sampans and some others are in yachts. Just saying.